Hello and welcome to day two of Pension Awareness Week and our second session of today. I'm John Sherlock from MyCSP and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Joining me today we have Catherine Murray, Training and Engagement Manager from MyCSP, Emily Wilson, Senior Training Consultant from MyCSP and from Cabinet Office we have Andy Jones, Engagement Manager for Civil Service and Royal Mail Pensions. Today's session is all about preparing you for retirement and providing you with a retirement planning checklist to hopefully make the process as smooth as possible. We'll also be demonstrating the Civil Service Pensions Retirement Modeler so you can use it to see if you're on track for the retirement you want. You may notice that we have changed the format of today's session and instead of asking specific questions to the panel, you'll be asked to vote on a range of topics you'd like our panel to discuss. We've done this based on feedback from attendees of previous sessions, and it means that our panel will be able to answer the frequently asked questions on the most popular topics. And these questions are questions that have been submitted by members uh, to our training team and to previous Live at Lunch and Pension Awareness Week events. OK, so without further ado, we're now going to jump straight into to today's session. And to begin with, we'd like to tell we'd like you to tell us which topics you'd like our panel of experts to discuss. To do that, simply choose two topics from the list that should be on your screen now. Um, and that survey will be live for the next few minutes. So please do cast your vote. Whilst you're doing that, I'd just like to take the time to remind you to give us feedback on today's event. You can do that by completing the short survey that will be emailed to you later today. Um, your feedback really is important to us as it helps us to improve and tailor these events to you. So please do take the time to complete it. Uh, and finally, I'd just like to mention that if you do have a specific question or problem with your pension that isn't covered in today, today's session, um, I would urge you to consider taking part in one of our Pension Power training sessions. Pension Power is a one hour webinar delivered by pensions experts. It's completely free. It's designed to help you get to grips with your pension. And if you'd like to know more about Pension Power, please stick around until the end of today's session. OK, so before I hand over to Emily, we're now going to launch our second poll of the day. And the question we would like you to answer is, when are you planning to retire? So that's when are you planning to retire? And again, that survey is going to be on your screen for the next few minutes. So please do let us know your answer to that one. OK, so without further delay, I'm now going to hand over to our first speaker, Emily Wilson, who will be showing you how you can get ready for retirement. Over to you, Emily. Thank you, John. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emily Wilson, as John said. Um, I'm here to bring you through a little bit of a pre presentation that we put to together for retirement, um, preparing for retirement, as well as a little checklist to bring it all together. Um, so hopefully by the end of this, you'll feel a little bit more prepared about retirement in general when it comes to your civil service pension. So the agenda today, we're going to look at when you can retire. We're also going to look at the different types of retirement, so early and late, even partial, um, will be covered there. Retirement as a dual member, so that is if you were in one scheme and then moved over to Alpha without a break in service, which a lot of people fall into that category, so we felt it was important that we included that in the content today. We'll look at the retirement process itself, so how much notice you need to give us bringing that all together into a retirement checklist really, so that you can make some notes on that as we go through, take it away and then just start ticking off them boxes as you come to your retirement to start preparing for it. And then at the very end, we'll just give a little bit of information about any further support that you can utilize. So there's lots of support that we've got to help people understand the pension and the processes and the options. Today is just one of them. There's a lot of other places you can go. So we'll be pointing you on to them as well. First things first, when can I retire? This is one of the most common questions that we get, you know, just when can I actually retire? All of these schemes in the civil service pensions have what we call a normal pension age. And when we say normal pension age, we just mean the age you can claim your benefits from without any reductions. I think a lot of people misunderstand that and they assume that it means that you have to wait until that age to get anything from it at all. That's not the case. So early retirement is an option in all of these schemes. 
the absolute earliest you can claim the pension from is determined by when you joined each scheme that you've got service in. So if you joined your pension scheme before the 6th of April 2006, then you can claim it from as early as age 50. If you join the scheme after April 06, you can claim it from as early as age 55. And that's when you joined each scheme. So you could have you know, two different minimum pension ages going on there. The normal pension age for each scheme. So our final salary schemes is 60. And that covers classic, premium and classic plus. Remember as well, let's not forget about classic plus. We've then got Nuvos, which is 65, and Alpha, which is officially the later of 65 or your state pension age. So for the majority, it's going to be state pension age for Alpha. Partial retirement is something that we'll talk about a little bit today as well. I think the main thing just to point out first with partial is that you need your employer's permission to actually do it. So your employer needs to see if this new change in working hours or job pattern can actually be accommodated by the business or not. So make sure you always have a conversation with them first before officially applying so that you know everyone's on the same page with it. The different types of retirement. So first of all, we've got normal or age retirement is technically what it's called. And this is where you access the pension at the normal pension age for that scheme. But normal retirement is what we normally hear it be called. Early retirement, remember early is an option in all of the schemes. And this links into the minimum pension ages that I spoke about before of 50 or 55, depending on when you actually joined each scheme that you've got service in. If you do take early retirement, some reductions will be applied to the pension figures that you've built up. And that's just to take account of the fact that it's then likely going to be paid out to you for longer. These pensions are paid for life, you see, whether you take normal retirement or early retirement. So that's why them early reduction, um, why the early reductions are actually applied. Late retirement, let's not forget about that. So you can definitely carry on working beyond the normal pension age for your scheme and carry on accruing pension benefits. So you don't have to bring it into payment when you hit the normal pension age. Like I say, you can carry on working, carry on contributing and carry on accruing them pension benefits as normal for the most part. For the career average schemes, which is new boss and alpha, you'll also get a small extra increase for every April that you're in work beyond your normal pension age. But the message there is, yes, you can carry on working beyond pension age. It'll continue to accrue as normal. You'll even get that little bit extra with the career average schemes. And then partial retirement, as we've said. So this is where you reduce your working hours or earnings and then bring some of your pension into payment at the same time. So you've got a pension income coming in while you're remaining in work and have some form of employment income coming in as well. So it's literally partially still in service, partially retired. With that, you can carry on contributing to the scheme. So it means that you're continuing to accrue even more pension benefits in the scheme that you're in at the time to then also bring into payment when you then fully retire. So it's a really good method um, and it's something that is becoming a lot more popular. Dual membership. So this is people who were in one scheme and then moved over to the Alpha scheme with no break in service. A lot of people ask us, how does that actually work? And what does it mean? It just means you've got benefits in both schemes. So you still have the benefits you accrued in your previous scheme, you're just now building up benefits in your alpha scheme going forward. So you've got two schemes there to claim. They have different calculations to them, different normal pension ages as well. But remember, early retirement is an option for both. So when you come to retire, you could claim them both at the same time. It might mean taking early retirement on your alpha, for example. But you don't have to do that. You could claim just your classic and preserve your alpha for later on down the line if you wanted to, for example. If you do defer one of the pensions, it will just then remain with us kind of frozen, changing with inflation over the years until you claim it. So the type of inflation that it's based on is called CPI, which is consumer price index. So in summary, a dual member just has two pension schemes to claim at retirement, which have different calculations and different pension ages. That kind of links into the 2015 remedy. 
I'm sure a lot of you will have already heard about this. This really is kind of the topic of the moment when it comes to pension schemes, public sector schemes across the board in the UK. So the 2015 remedy, this relates to when the Alpha scheme first launched in 2015. Um, initially, some members had to move over to Alpha while others did not. And the determinant factor basically was age. So that's been kind of investigated. There's been a public consultation on that. And as a result of the consultation, it means that everyone affected by this will have a pretty important choice when it comes to retire. So just to clarify those who are affected, you had to be in public sector employment on the 31st of March, 2012, and then continue to be in public sector employment on the 31st of March, 2015. So if you are affected, it means that you'll have the choice where you put the seven year remedy period. And that seven years is from April 2015 when Alpha first launched up to the end of March this year. So when you retire, you'll basically get two sets of figures on your retirement quote, one with the seven years being in Alpha and one with the seven years being in your previous scheme. You then just decide which one of them two options you wanna go for. So it is your choice. The whole where you have the option of where, put, where you put them seven year remedy period, that is currently still making its way through things like legislation, and that's expected to conclude by October 2023. So by October next year, and following that is when people will, will then start getting that option and then figures on their retirement quotes. If you retire before October next year, you will still get that choice, but it will be down the line retrospectively after October 23, once everything has been implemented for that. So you're not gonna miss out if you retire beforehand. It's just gonna to have to be a retrospective decision if you do. Um, but like I say, it's all gonna be laid out for you on a quote. So it should be pretty clear for you to see which one you wanna go for and what it's gonna look like for you in terms of figures. So when it comes to retirement, there's quite a lot of things to consider. Um, and what we thought we would do to try and help with that is put together a little bit of a retirement checklist. So you might wanna make some notes for the next slide that's coming up, just some ideas to take away of things that you can do following this session to, to help yourself really along the process. So let's go. So firstly, you need to consider how much income you're gonna need in retirement. So maybe have a look at what your current outgoings are. Maybe try and split that into essential and non-essential expenditure. But also it's worth having a while, it's worth a while, sorry, having a think here, how your expenses might change in retirement. For example, when you fully retire, you might not be spending you know, money every day on traveling to and from work. If you buy your lunches every day while you're in the office, you might not be spending that money anymore. So think about how your outgoings are gonna change as well once you transition to retired life. You then need to work out what your retirement income is gonna be. So your civil service pension is an obvious one to consider with that. Um, you can use a tool called the Retirement Modeler, which is on our pension portal to project what your figures are gonna look like. And Catherine's gonna walk you through that modeler later on in, this, in the session today. But it's really easy, I think, to forget about any other pensions that you might have. So just a reminder, what about your state pension? So if you go to the .gov website, you can get an estimate of your state pension. And what about any other pensions that you might have lying around somewhere? You know, maybe you haven't always worked for the civil service, so you might have another occupational pension sitting somewhere. And I think it's really easy actually to lose track of who administers your pensions over the years. So on the .gov website, they've got a facility called the Pension Tracing Service. It's probably worth having a look at that just to see if you've got any other pensions lying around somewhere. So you can bring them all together and get a clear picture of your pension income. At that point is when you can start thinking about your retirement options. So specifically what we mean there is the lump sum. Are you gonna to want to take a lump sum from your civil service pension? And if so, what would you do with that? What, what would you use a lump sum for? So you can take up to 25% of your overall pot value as a tax-free lump sum from the civil service pension schemes. So that's something that you should be given a lot of thought to. That's a really important decision to make at retirement. 
then just kind of take a step back and look at your overall position. You know, do you have a retirement plan? What are you going to do in retirement? I think for a lot of people, a lot of people spend most of their adult life working, but also a lot of that working full time as well. So you do become quite used to and quite accustomed to that lifestyle of the structure, the routine and moving from work and life to retired life. All of a sudden, you're going to have all of this time that you didn't have before. That can be a really big change of lifestyle lifestyle. Um, and one that can be difficult to adjust to sometimes. So it's definitely worth giving some thought as to what do you want to do in your retirement? So in an ideal world for you, what would you spend your time doing if there were no limits to that? So make a note of that and then see if that can fit in with your retirement income. But also as well, just a reminder, get support. Obviously, we're running sessions all of this week for Pension Awareness Week, but there's lots of other avenues of support for pensions as well. You've got the Civil Service Pension Scheme website, which is full of information. We've got um, pension training sessions. So we've got Pension Power, which is a one hour webinar funded by the Cabinet Office. We've got pre-retirement courses and lots of other things going on. We've got a pension podcast, which John will tell you more about later. So utilize all of these other resources that you've got to help you moving forward. Process wise, when you retire, I'll just tell you a little bit about that. So ideally we like four months notice for retirement if possible. And it's because on average, that's how long it could actually take to put a pension into payment from start to finish. So if you can give us the four months notice, um, that just gives us you know, a good bit of time to get everything in place for your retirement date. So four months before, arrange your last day of service with your employer. Your employer will then send us notification that you're intending to retire. Um, what we do at that point, we will check over all of the data that we've got for you basically for your career. And we'll make sure that everything looks about right to us and that nothing seems to be missing kind of with no explanation behind it. At that point, if we need to, we'll contact your employer just to kind of link in with them and see if we need to clarify any data or to gather anything missing. So again, giving us this four months notice allows us the time to do that. So do try and give four months wherever possible. Once we've got all of the information that we need for you, we'll then go ahead and calculate your quote, your retirement quote that will have all of your figures on it. Remember, this will have your remedy figures if it's after October next year as well. And it also has all of the forms that you need to sign in return to let us know your options and bank details and all of the rest of it. So that quote should be on its way to you by around two months before your retirement date. That's where you have a little think about your options. So are you gonna take a lump sum? Um, are you gonna claim both of your pensions if you're a dual member or maybe just one? But whatever it is that you choose, you state that on the forms and you return it directly to us, please. Ideally, no later than around one month before your retirement date, just so that we've got time to give everything a final check over. But we'll then go ahead and process everything. If you choose a lump sum, that'll be paid to you just after your retirement date, as long as you get the form back to us with one month's notice. And the pension payments themselves, they're paid roughly one month in arrears. So around one month later, you'll get your first monthly pension payment as well. If, you, if we don't get the four months notice, it just means that we may not have these payments made in this time frame for you. But if it does go over for whatever reason, we'll back pay that payment to your, to your last day of service, of course. But ideally, we'd have the four months notice just to try and avoid that if possible. Okay, so we thought we'd just kind of bring all of that together a little bit in what we like to call your pension passport. It's basically classed as a travel checklist for as you travel through your, your pension journey, so through your career, and then it comes to the point where you retire and you're looking into your options. So just a reminder of some things that we would suggest you do throughout. If you haven't already, um, just maybe make a note of these as I talk through it. So number one, you need to visit the Civil Service Pension Scheme website. So that is civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk. There's so much information on there. A lot content for pretty much everything you can think of is on there. We've got calculators, forms, guides. We've got a what to expect if you're retiring guide. And um, so that's particularly useful for the topic of today. 
make sure you register for the pension portal. This is the online login facility on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website. And that's where you go to check over your benefit statement, use our pre-populated modeler, um, also update your death benefit nomination, which is kind of the next thing on the list here. Make sure your death benefit nomination is up to date. That's a one-off lump sum that you nominate someone to receive when you pass away. So that's your responsibility to let us know who you want that to be. Um, check in with the 2015 remedy page on the website as well. It's literally on the home page. I think it's the first link as you open up the pension scheme website. And let me tell you, it's a really, really useful page on the website. The FAQ page in particular is really good. Um, it actually helped to answer a lot of the questions that I initially had about the remedy when it first came out. So really, really useful, more so than you would imagine. So make sure you check that out. And just some final things from me, just other places that you can go to get some you know, help about planning for your pension and for retirement. So first of all, we've got the Money and Pension Service or MAPS and the Money Helper as well. And them two kind of work um, a little bit in conjunction with each other. They just give kind of information about pensions in general in the UK. So obviously you can speak to them. We've got the Civil Service Pensioners Alliance. They've, that's a charity that we work with for civil servants, and they have been around for over 70 years now. They offer quite a wide range of services from travel insurance to um, even a computer helpline they run. So that's really useful and qu um, quite varied. And we've then got the Civil Service Retirement Fellowship. They operate under the whole objective of combating loneliness in retirement. So their whole aim is to combat loneliness in retirement. They run some national befriending schemes. They specialize in local community groups as well. Um, so if you're concerned about that at all, they're your people. Make sure you get in touch with them. They're there to be utilized. Um, and I just want to finish off with another little line about pension power. Pension Power is a one hour webinar session, which is completely free of charge for you to attend because it's funded by the scheme manager, the cabinet office, literally to try and you know, raise engagement and awareness of pensions and to help people prepare. Um, we run them every single working day and they are really popular sessions, just a heads up. Um, so have a look on the pension scheme website. You should hopefully find a date and time that's suitable for you. And we also talk about the pension scheme calculations in there. So. If you want to know more about that, come and join us on one of the sessions. OK, so that's it from me for today. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. I'm going to hand back to John. Thanks, Emily. That was really, really helpful uh, and a great introduction to today's topic and session. Um, <clears throat> we're now going to take a very quick look at the results of the polling question, um, which was, when are you planning to retire? So the results are in, and I can tell you that 77% of you have said that you are planning to retire within the next five years. So I'm sure that lots of you now will be planning to, to utilise the, the checklist that Emily covered in, in her presentation um, and looking to, uh, looking to get the ball rolling with your retirement. The remaining 23% said that you are, well, said that you are going to plan, planning to retire between five and 10 years time. So it's great to see that you are already taking uh, positive steps to plan your retirement by attending today's session. So that's great. Um, as we always say, it's never too early to start thinking about your retirement. As Emily mentioned there, if you do need any further information about the retirement process, please do visit the scheme website. There's lots and lots of information on there. Um, and if you would like to um, download the pension passport that Emily mentioned, you can just simply visit the scheme website and use the search engine in the top right hand corner and search for pension passport and you'll be able to download that. OK, so you will have noticed that another poll has appeared on your screen. Uh, and the question we'd like you to answer now is, has the current financial crisis made you change your plans for retirement? OK, again, that poll will be live for the next few minutes, so please do let us know your answers to that one. OK, um, moving on, I'm now going to hand uh, over to Catherine, who is going to lead the next part of the session. Um, and I'm sure this is something that many of you are looking forward to. This is a demonstration of the Civil Service Pensions Retirement Modeler and how you can use it to calculate if your retirement is on the right track. So over to you, Catherine. 
Thank you, John. Afternoon, everyone. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a look at the Retirement Modeler, which if you haven't used it yet, then I think you're really missing out. It's a tool that we've had on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website for a couple of years now. And it's just a really useful tool to help you with your retirement planning. And often when we're running things like pre-retirement seminars and pension power, we get so many people saying, wow, I love the Retirement Modeler. It's such a good tool. And yeah, I would definitely agree with them personally love to play with it myself as well just to see what those future pension benefits can look like now there are two different ways to use the retirement modeler so the easiest way to use it is via the pension portal which if you haven't registered for the pension portal yet then do please stay, take some time out to do that we've just made some revisions to the process to register for the pension portal so it's now even easier to get online so if you're not yet registered online, then do take some time out to do that. That is the only place now where you'll see each year's annual benefit statement. They're loaded online. You no longer receive a copy through the post. So do take some time out to register if you haven't already. So that's the easiest way to use the retirement modeler. But the format that I'm taking today is using the longer version, which is available on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website. So in the Knowledge Center, um, you'll find a link to Tools and Calculators and you'll find the retirement modeler there. But the difference between the two approaches with this version, it means that you have to fill in all of the data yourself. Um, whereas if you use it via the portal, it just pulls all of the information through from your already created annual benefit statement. So it just makes it easier for you to use. So I've already completed this. Here's one I made earlier, as they say, um, just with information that's already in here. So it's already been pre-populated with the information for this member in terms of which scheme they were in before they were in alpha and um, what their pension earnings are and how much pension they've built up so far. So all of the information that you would see on your annual benefit statement. If you then click on calculate my estimate, it will then take you through to the results page so it gives you an indication of what your pension benefits might look like further down the line. So it takes the information from your annual benefit statement in terms of what you've built up so far. And this is then giving you those projections for the future. So you can say, what would my pension look like if I retired at 65, 64, 63, whatever age it is that you have in mind. So if it's, you're looking at early retirement, all of the reductions that would apply will be included in these figures. Um, and that's all incorporated. So you can get a really accurate picture of what your pension might look like in the future. And that will really help you with your retirement planning. Sometimes people fixate on the age that they would like to retire. But the most important thing really is, well, how much will I need to be able to afford the kind of retirement that I'm looking for? And this modeler can really help you to arrive at that. So in this example, we've used a member who was in the premium scheme and then moved across to alpha. And this is showing what their pension benefits would look like if they retired at age 65. So first off, it shows us a pension of £22,187. That's how much they'd receive annually if they retired at 65. If we scroll down and look at this green table on the right hand side, that then gives us an indication of which bits of those benefits come from premium. That's £10,000 worth of premium pension and 12187 comes from alpha. So that's where if they wanted to take maybe just one pension and not the other, for example, then they could obviously just use the figures within this green bar chart if they decided to retire and take one set of benefits without the other. So what we can do here is we can use our slider bars. So this is set to age 65, but what if this person decides they would like to retire at a younger age? So you can either just scroll like this, or you can use the ages to move up and down. So I'm just gonna look then at age 60 for this member, and let's see what difference that makes. So they've still got 10,000 pounds from premium. That's the age their premium pension is paid to them without reduction. And then the pension from Alpha has dropped to 6,597. They've got five years, years less worth of accrual in Alpha, but also a larger reduction is being applied for claiming those pension benefits earlier. So that's making a difference. So you can play around with those ages there. And then the second slider bar is looking at the lump sum that's available. So it's defaulted to zero lump sum, but we can use the slider bar and then slide it up to 100% of the maximum lump sum that's available to this member. So you can see there they've gone from zero lump sum to having this 71131 figure available to them. 
and their pension reduces to 10,670 as they've opted to take the maximum lump sum available to them. Worth noting here that the lump sum that's payable to you from your civil service pension is paid to you free of tax. So you won't pay any tax on the lump sum that's paid to you from your civil service pension, with the only exception being to someone who might have a large value of pension benefits who might breach the lifetime allowance. HMRC's total limit on how much you can have in pension savings from all sources. Unless you're looking at breaching a limit like that, then all of the lump sum that's paid to you from your civil service pension is paid to you tax free. So when we, we say it's 100% of the maximum available, it's 100% of the maximum tax-free cash you're allowed to take as lump sum at retirement. So what the modeler does, it assumes that your salary will remain the same from now until the retirement age that you've input. And it assumes that no inflation is going to be applied to your pension benefits either. So you are able to make some adjustments if you want to. So if you go into this little edit button here, then you are able to estimate a salary increase. Now, you can't go crazy. You can't assume you're going to double your salary in the next couple of years. But you can increase that up to a maximum of 4% and see what difference that makes to your figures. So assuming you get a 4% pay rise every year, and that will show you what those figures would look like with inflation applied. If you think that's not that realistic, you might say, actually, let's just assume I get a 1% pay rise every year and that's going to give you those updated figures as well so you can see what that looks like. So at the moment, the retirement modeler uses the information from your latest annual benefit statement that's calculated to the 31st of March. So it's projecting your future pension benefits from that point onwards using that situation. So if you, for example, have had a pay rise partly through the year, then that's not going to be reflected in these figures. It's simply going to show um, the pension benefits based on what you were earning and your working pattern at that moment in time. Something that is being worked on at the moment is enhancements to the modeler. And in the future, it will be linked to your live pension record. So whenever anything does change in regards to your circumstances, such as pay and working pattern, and that will be linked live to the modeler and you'll be able to get live figures as those changes occur and they're updated on your pension record. So it'll be even more useful in the future. So whether your retirement is in the next six months, whether it is 15 years away, we'd still recommend that you use the retirement modeler fairly regularly just to see what those pension figures look like. And that's going to help you with that retirement plan for the future. So you know what level of income you can expect to receive. Um, so you can make those plans. And obviously, you've got that lump sum option. So you've got members who might decide, I'm going to take the maximum lump sum available to me at retirement. Maybe they're going to use that to clear their mortgage or something like that. Um, or you might go, actually, I'd much rather have a larger pension paid to me every month. So being able to see those figures ahead of time will help with your decision making process when you do get there, when you do have to make that call and decide whether you want to go for a larger lump sum or the larger pension. So those are the options that are available to you. So if you haven't used the modeler yet, then hopefully now that will spur you on to take some time out of your day to have a little look, play around with those figures and help prepare for what your retirement might be in the future. Okay, that's it from me for now. Back to you, John. Thank you. Um, that was really helpful. Thanks, Catherine. So as Catherine said there, the modeler really is uh, an essential tool in your uh, you know, your uh, retirement planning checklist. So if you haven't used it yet, please do so. Uh, and if you haven't registered for the pension portal, it really is worth doing so as you'll be able to access a version of the modeler, which is pre-populated with your details taken from your annual benefit statements. Registering for and logging onto the portal is very easy. And for more information on how to do that, simply visit the scheme website. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the results of the last poll. Um, we asked you, has the current financial crisis made you change your plans for retirement? Um, positively, 62% of you said that the current situation hasn't. So it's very good there to see that the current situation hasn't hampered uh, your retirement plans. Okay, so we're gonna go to the polls for the final time today. And the final question we're going to ask is, at the moment, how prepared do you feel to retire? So at the moment, how prepared do you feel to retire? As usual, that poll is going to be on screen for the next few minutes, and we'll look at your responses to that one a little bit later on. Okay, so we're just over halfway through today's session. I hope you uh, are enjoying it and have found it useful. For the next 20, 25 minutes or so, 
our pensions experts are going to uh, go we're going to be tackling the frequently asked questions relating to the subjects that you voted for earlier so to begin with we're just going to have a little look at the topics that you've said you'd like our panel to discuss and i can tell you that I'm just waiting for those to drop in okay so the two topics that you've said you would like our panel to discuss are calculations quotes and estimates and the other one is early and partial retirement Okay, so we're going to go to the panel now uh, to answer those questions. And these are frequently asked questions that we've compiled based on uh, a lot of questions that are submitted from members. So the first question is going to go to Andy. And it's, if I want to retire early, how will that affect my pension? So that's one for you, Andy. Uh, great question. Thank you very much, John. Um, I'm just realising it's extremely dark in my room and I look like I'm uh, telling a ghost story. Um, Early retirement, what would happen? Essentially, your pension would be reduced, as uh, Emily mentioned, but each year you take it early. We roughly say it's around 4 to 5% uh, reduction that is applied to an individual's pension. Uh, the one thing to bear in mind is uh, any spouse's benefits, civil partner benefits or partner benefits that are also payable would not be reduced. Uh, the whole reason that a member's pension would be reduced is that the... Um, pension is going to be paid for longer. Uh, the great thing is the modeler that um, Catherine uh, showed has all those uh, reduction factors built into it. So it provides you with the detail. If you did want to retire before uh, retirement age, it provides you with that accurate figure of what your pension is likely to be. Hope that helps, John. That's really helpful. Thanks, Andy. That's good. Um, okay, so the next question is, can I partially retire and uh Catherine if you don't mind I'm going to come to to you with this one yeah no worries thanks um so yeah so partial retirement is available within the scheme to be able to take partial retirement you have to agree with your employer to reduce your pensionable earnings by at least 20 percent so the important thing to know is with partial retirement you do have to have approval from your employer they have to be able to support the change to your job and your working pattern with all other kinds of retirement it's entirely up to you but you do need your employer's agreement for this one so it is available and to access some of your pension benefits and keep working you do have to take a form of retirement like partial retirement so yeah it's a, definitely available within the scheme it's a very popular option we just need to make sure you've got that time to have that negotiation with your employer to make sure they can support your partial retirement and that change to your job thanks john Thanks, Catherine. It's really helpful. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is for Emily, and it is, how much notice do I need to give for retirement and when can I expect my quote? Thanks, John. Hi again, everyone. Um, so how much notice do you need for retirement? In a nutshell, ideally, we would like four months notice if possible. And it's because on average, from start to finish, that's how long you could be looking at for the whole process to complete for a pension to go into payment. So if you can give us the four months notice, it just means that we've got a good amount of time then to get things ready for the date that you want it for. When we get notice from your employer, we'll check over everything that we've got for you just to make sure that nothing is missing. Um, and we'll check in with your employer, we'll link with them if there's anything that we need to pick up. So if we need to just double check anything on the data. Once we've got everything we need, we'll calculate a retirement quote and send it out to you. And we try and aim for that to be no later than around two months before your retirement date. And that's got all of your options in it. Um, it's got the two sets of figures for the 2015 remedy. If it's after October next year, it's got all of your forms. It's even got your maximum lump sum on there. It tells you what your standard figures are that you've accrued, but it then also shows this is the maximum lump sum available from what you've accrued and what the pension would reduce to. So around two months before there. Sign and return that to us by around one month before, if possible. We'll give everything a final check over and then we're good to go. We'll process everything to put your pension into payment. Um, I know that we covered this a little bit before, but just to add on to that, if you choose a lump sum, that'll be paid just after your retirement date. And the pension payments, they're paid roughly one month in arrears. So around one month later, you'll get your first pension payment as well. So hopefully that helps. Back to you, John. 
Thanks, Emily. I'm sure uh, everybody found that useful. Okay, so the next question is, I'm not sure when I want to retire. Where can I find out more information? Uh, Andy, can I come to you with this one, please? Yeah, definitely. Uh, great question. Uh, first things first, information wise, there is shed loads of information on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website uh, from useful booklets, videos, dedicated pages on various different subjects, as well. If you're a bit like me, you want to read the scheme rules, you can do. Um, there is also uh, on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website, that's where you can get access to the portal to utilize the retirement modeler. Um, to predict and project what your pension is going to be when you want to retire. Uh, but one of the big questions, I know Emma, Emily mentioned it in her uh, talk at the beginning of today's session, is how much do you actually need? And there are a couple of really good websites out there. Uh, one of the ones that I'm a big fan of is the one on Money Helper, which has a budget planner for what you would likely need in retirement as well. So there's a wealth of information out there. Uh, like I say, Civil Service Pension Scheme website, um, for everything to do with civil service pensions. And if you want to use something to predict uh, what you might need when you retire, go on Money Helper uh, and they've got a budget tool on there which can help you out with what you need. Hope that helps, John. Thanks, Andy. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a great tip. Um, the uh, Budget Helper sounds like a great tool, so I'm sure lots of people will be using that. Okay, next question. Um, this is something that we haven't covered today. Um, can I take a partial retirement in partnership? Catherine, can I come to you with this one? Yeah, thanks, John. So, yeah, we haven't talked about the partnership scheme yet today. So just to give you a little bit of background on that, it is a scheme that is available within the civil service pension scheme, but it differs from all of the other schemes because it's a defined contribution scheme. So it's based on investment in the stock market and how those investments perform. It's run by legal and general. Um, who work in conjunction with us to provide the partnership scheme. So it works very differently from the rest of our schemes. So you are able to take the benefits that you've built up as a partnership member and take almost take partial retirement, but it doesn't work in quite the same way. You don't have to meet the same criteria. So you are able to access the pension benefits you've built up in partnership and continue working and build an extra pension benefits for the future. But there's no, for example, um, stipulation that states you have to reduce your earnings by 20% or more, like you have to do taking partial retirement from the other schemes. So you've got a little bit more flexibility. So theoretically, yes, in a way, you could see that as partial retirement, but you don't have to have that approval. You would obviously have to have your employer's approval if you did want to change your working pattern, just like you would at any other time. But theoretically, you could access your partnership pension benefits and keep working in your current working pattern and nothing change. That would be available to you within the rules of the scheme. So hopefully that's helpful. Back to you, John. Thanks, Catherine. Catherine, where would um, somebody go to find out more information about the partnership scheme? So partnership scheme, you can read more about it on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website. And on there, there are also links through to legal and general. So you can find out more from them about the, for example, the investment options available. So you can go for a default investment fund, um, which they will prepare for you, or you can have more choice. So for example, if you want to go into a more high risk fund that has more potential for growth, you are able to do that or a safer fund that you might want to move into as you get closer to retirement. Or maybe if you're interested in having an ethical fund, there are options around things like that as well. In our pension power sessions, we talk about partnership, particularly in our new joiner pension power session, which focuses just on alpha and partnership. You'll find more information about the partnership scheme by attending one of those sessions as well. But first port of call, as always, Civil Service Pension Scheme website's a really good starting point, and that will take you all of the other places that you need to go. Thank you, brilliant. Thanks, Catherine, it's really helpful. Um, okay, so we're now going to look at the, the second category of questions um, that you voted for today, and they are, well, it is cal calculations, quotes, and estimates. So the first question is, I feel a bit guilty coming back to you, Catherine. You've answered two <laughs> in succession. Um, how accurate is my pension estimate in the retirement modeler? Is there any guidance available on using it? And Catherine, I'd like to come to you on this one, please. 
no worries I'll take all the questions that's fine um so the retirement modeler the really important thing when using the retirement modeler is it is based on the information that's derived from your annual benefit statement so you need to have a look at your annual benefit statement and feel confident that the information within it does correctly reflect your circumstances so for example the figure that's there as your earnings looks to reflect what you think your earnings have been in the last 12 months the reckonable service figure if you were previously in a final salary scheme looks to correctly reflect your circumstances if you think anything looks amiss then do get in touch with the scheme um, and they can investigate and put that right because if the information that's put in in the beginning isn't correct then you're not going to get a correct accurate reflection out of the modeler as long as you're happy that information is correct which will be the case for the majority of people in their annual benefit statements then that retirement modeler does give you a really accurate picture of what the future looks like but assuming things for example of course like we can't predict how your salary is going to change in the future. We can't predict the future rates of inflation. So those things aren't in there. Those things will change and grow. But certainly based in today's terms, yes, the modeler is as accurate a reflection as you can possibly get as long as the information going into it is correct. Back to you, John. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, it would be, uh, it would be nice, wouldn't it, if we could predict the future. Um, okay, so the next question is, I was contributing to a legacy scheme for years before moving into Alpha. How do my awards work when I retire in this case? Um, and I think we'll give Catherine a break now and come to you with this one, Emily. Yep, sure. Thank you, John. Um, so if you contributed to a legacy scheme and then you've moved over to Alpha with no break in service, you fall into the category that we covered before on the PowerPoint, which is dual membership. So you're a dual member. It means that your benefits at the end will basically be made up of two, two schemes. So you've got the benefits you still accrued in your previous scheme still there based on that previous scheme's calculation, but also the normal pension age for that previous scheme. You're just now building up an alpha pension going forward. So calculated in the alpha way with the alpha's normal pension age. So when at the end you come to retire, you've just got two schemes there to claim, which have got their own calculations and their own normal pension ages. And you can take them both at the same time if you want to. It might mean having to take early retirement on your alpha, for example, if you were maybe age 60 and you were ready to bring your classic into payment, let's say, you could also bring your alpha into payment at the same time, but with the reductions for early retirement that Andy was speaking about before. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to claim both of them. You can claim just one and preserve one. So a preserved pension just means it's sitting with us frozen and it's changing with inflation as the years go on. And that's a type of inflation called CPI, which stands for consumer price index. So in a nutshell, like I say, it just means you've literally got both pension schemes there to claim at the end for when you retire, calculated separately. Um, and if you wanna know more about how each of them schemes are calculated, we do cover that in the pension power sessions. So I think that'll be really useful if you are a dual member, come and join us at one of the pension power sessions. I think you'll get a lot out of it and have a look on the civil service pension scheme website for that. Type in pension power and it will take you to the link to book a place. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Uh, again, really helpful. Thank you. And um, just a, a little reminder, if you do need to search for anything on the Civil Service Pensions website, the search engine is located in the top right hand corner and it's really, really good. Provides uh, a, lo a lot of uh, information. OK, so Andy, this is a question that we've probably covered um, today already, but I think it would be worth coming back to it to, uh, to just reinforce the point. But also I wonder if you could expand on it slightly. And the question is, how do I find out how much I'm on track to get when I retire? Uh, great question. Yeah, it's very similar to what I mentioned before. Uh, for civil service pensions wise, we spoke about it a lot, is the retirement modeler. That's going to predict and project what you're going to get at the age that you um, want to retire. Uh, utilize the tools that like on a money helper to predict what you might need uh, and where you can find further advice. Uh, just to expand a bit further, you everyone or a lot of people forget about the state pension. If you go on uh, gov.uk, you can sign in. Uh, you just need, uh, usually you need your passport or your driving license to be able to access it uh, securely. And that is then your uh, own record and you can see if you've got any missing years 
um, towards your state pension and you can work with HMRC to see if there's any way you can make them up. But it'll provide you with a projection of what your state pension is likely to be when you reach state pension age. Uh, one of the things that we touched on as well was, I think Emily mentioned it, was about the pension tracing service that is currently out there. Um, there's some great piece of technology that is going to be coming out in next year, around in 24, called the Pensions Dashboard, um, which is going to be, it's going to be, uh, enable you to find any un- um, any forgotten pensions it's going to be able to see any pension that you have not just in the civil service but if you had uh, in a job at tesco or if you like me you worked at jd sports things like that you may have a small pension with those and the dashboard will enable you to see what pensions you have elsewhere and any ones that you may have forgotten about as well um like i say that's expected to go live around 2023 september 23 uh throughout 2024 as well um, so yeah, that'll give you that full picture of all of what your retirement income is likely to be. Uh, I hope that helps, John. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, that was uh, that was really helpful and, and a, a great reminder there regarding the state pension and uh, the pensions dashboard. So we'll look out for that one. Okay, um, we've probably just having a little look at the time. So I think we've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, the next question is, and I know this is a very, uh, this is a, a really popular question. How are final pensionable earnings calculated? Um, Catherine, I wonder if you could uh, just briefly explain that and uh, provide that answer, please. Yeah, absolutely. So our final salary schemes, classic, classic plus and premium are based on pensionable earnings or final pensionable earnings. It's important to note that the link to your final salary with those earnings continues until point of retirement. So that link to your final salary didn't stop at the point at which you moved across to alpha. So that means if your earnings go up, if you get promotions and pay rises, you're still going to feel the benefit of that in the pension calculation for those final salary benefits. And we always use your full-time equivalent salary when calculating those pensionable earnings in the final salary schemes. We don't use your part-time earnings. In a classic scheme, it's your best final salary in the three years leading up to your last day of service. So whichever 12 month period is the highest, we use that to calculate your classic pension. For classic plus and premium, it's your best final salary in the 13 years leading up to your last day of service. So slightly different calculations between those schemes. And then when we come to our career average scheme, so Nuvos and Alpha, there's no, you don't have final pensionable earnings, but you receive a proportion of your earnings each year as annual pension. And in Nuvos, that proportions 2.3% of your earnings, in Alpha, 2.32. So it's not a case of everything's based on your final salary like it is in the final salary schemes. It's a proportion of your earnings each year that you'll remember. So hopefully that's helpful. Back to you, John. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, I'm sure that was uh, very helpful for people. That is uh, what, uh, obviously a very frequently asked question. Um, OK, so I think we've got time for maybe one last question. And that is, if I have a query about information on my quote, who should I raise this with and how do I do so? Um, Catherine, we're going to give you a little break and go to Emily. Sure, thanks, John. Um, so if you've got a query about anything on either your benefit statement, when it comes, first of all, you'd need to just check that against your records and what you know to be true. And if anything does look incorrect, if it's personal information, you'd need to raise that with your employer. So, for example, if your home address is showing wrong, you might want to update that on your employer's records, and then that will automatically come through to us through an electronic update the following month. If it's pensionable information, so maybe the start date is showing incorrect, or maybe the pensionable pay figure on there doesn't quite add up to what you think it should be, then if you get that raised through to us, please, there's contact information on the scheme website, on the contact us page, but also on your benefit statement, it gives an email address specific to the benefit statement queries as well, um, which is the preferred method that you use to raise any queries. Just important to say, if you are going to be raising any queries, can you please make sure that you put in your email some identifying information about you so that we can find your record um, and share information with you. But also, I think any evidence as well that you've got to support 
um, what you're saying, basically. So this doesn't look right. It should be this. Here's, you know, evidence attached just to help us in the investigation of it. So that'll go to our benefit statements team. We may need to li liaise with your employer just to double check the data. But again, any evidence you can provide is just going to be helpful with that. And it's going to speed up the process ultimately. So the contact us page on the website or the benefit statement email address, which is on the benefit statement itself. Thanks, Emily. Some uh, really, really great advice. Thank you very much. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time uh, we have today for questions. Um, what we are going to do now is just look very quickly at the results of our final poll, which was at the moment, how prepared do you feel to retire? Um, well, the results are back in and I can see that 73% feel very or somewhat prepared. So that is, uh, that's fantastic. It's great news. Um, slightly, um, slightly, uh, <laughs> slightly less great is that 27% of you feel not at all prepared. Um, Catherine, what advice would you give to someone who may be feeling unprepared about their retirement? Um, well, I'd say, you know, if you're not feeling prepared for retirement, maybe the time isn't right for you to retire yet. So that's something to think about first and foremost. Remember, there's no sort of mandatory retirement age. It's up to you exactly when you decide to retire. So do bear that in mind first and foremost. I think finding some more information will give you things to think about. You know, there might be things in relation to your pension that you've never considered before. So attending a pension power session or a pre-retirement session, for example, that's going to give you a really good starting point. So some things to think about that you might not have considered before and you have got all the other tools available as well which we've mentioned throughout the session so all of the general information that's available on the civil service pension scheme website as well as resources like the money and pension service and money helper and maybe once you've gathered some information from all of those sources and um, then that will really help you Something else I would really recommend as well, I know John's probably going to mention this later, but the Civil Service Pensions podcast, the episode on retirement is, is really, really good. It's really thought provoking, I think, to hear about the experiences of someone who's retired fairly recently and how they're, they've sort of managed that transition from working to retirement and how that works. So if you're worried about it from a sort of well-being side of things in terms of how that's going to go in retirement, then the Civil Service Pensions podcast, episode two on retirement, is definitely worth a listen. That's you, John. Thanks, Catherine. Um, OK, so we are nearly out of time. Uh, but before we go, I'd just like to take uh, a few minutes to talk about two organisations that provide invaluable support, support to our pensioner members. The first is the Civil Service Pensioners Alliance, which is a campaigning organisation that helps to help you get the best from your retirement. The CSPA has been campaigning on behalf of pensioners for over 60 years, and it provides a range of services and benefits for pensioners. Um, for more information, we're just going to watch a very short video uh, from the CSPA. So let's do that now.
Thank you to the CSPA for sharing that with us. Um, the second organisation I wanted to tell you about today is called the Civil Service Retirement Fellowship. And it's a national charity dedicated to helping former civil servants and their dependents make the most of their retirement. Um, let's watch a short video now uh, to find out more about the CSRF. The Civil Service Retirement Fellowship is a national charity dedicated to helping former civil servants and their dependents make the most of their retirement. Through our three national services, we provide friendship and support to ensure a better quality of life for thousands of older people. Our befriending services ensure older people who may be experiencing loneliness or social isolation are provided with companionship either via home visits or regular phone calls. 82% of beneficiaries feel their quality of life has improved thanks to our befriending services. Our local community group network provides an essential forum for friendship and companionship across the country. Each individual group runs meetups, trips and activities so the attendees are able to live life to the fullest. Signposting is an information service where we use a network of relationships we have built with other organisations to give advice to beneficiaries on a range of subjects through letters, calls and emails. Over 500 requests for information were received and handled in the last 12 months. We rely on the generosity of the general public as we are entirely funded by donations and subscribers. To find out more about how our services ensure a better quality of life for older people or to sign up as a supporter, please visit www.csrf.org.uk. Thank you to the CSRF for that. Okay. Um, so finally, as Catherine mentioned, series one of the Civil Service podcast is also out now. Um, episodes include a Pensions 101, uh, there's an episode on life events, and of course, there's a retirement episode, as you'd expect, featuring a real member. Um, you can listen or download it on any major podcast platform. Just search Civil Service Pensions Podcast. And please do remember to subscribe to be notified about future episodes. OK, well, sadly, our time now is up, but thanks again for joining us. As mentioned earlier, please do let us know what you thought about today's session by completing the short survey that we will uh, email to you later on or possibly tomorrow morning. Thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.